Fresh test to ask for a campaign with the confidence rising. I told WDF don't switch, good times are coming on even deep diving. Fan cams, reactions, watch along, still the pride of London thriving. The Eagles of South, they flying. Keep your eyes on us, we ain't hiding. Yes, guys, welcome back to Transfer Weekly, episode four. The show where I tell you about all the transfers and all the rumours that revolve around Crystal Palace and anything that could happen in this summer window. Before I start, massive shout out to Rich with last episode, episode three. If you haven't watched it, go check it out. He held it down really well. And, you know, all I can say is thank you very much for him uh, hosting that episode. And yeah, let's get into this one. It might be a long one, but let's do it. Yeah, starting off extremely strong today with 24-year-old Belgian left winger that currently plays for Genk, yeah. Mike Trezor. And I tell you what, oh my gosh, what a player. He seems to be unreal with the ball at his feet. Reminds me a hell of a lot of Michael Aliso when he plays football. The way he glides with the ball, the way he takes on players and just his sort of attitude on the pitch. Very direct, very impressive on and off the ball. Not afraid to defend when he needs to and... Also, the fact that he's just so he's so good at picking up all these free spaces inside the box, outside the box. I've seen him head the ball. I've seen him pass the ball. However, he is able to use both feet, which is a huge plus when it comes to a winger. It means you're more complete. You're not only limited to cutting inside and using one foot. You can either cut inside and shoot or pass or go to the byline and cross. He's got everything in his locker and he seems to be an absolutely out- outstanding player. If you could ask me about anything that this guy is, I'd just say he's an absolutely tremendous winger and we need to get him at all costs. He's that good. Um, I think that he's the complete winger because of all the attributes that he's got. I think left foot, right foot is just so pivotal. That's why Wilfred Zaha was so good and has been so good consistently in the Premier League. I would like to also call this guy an absolute assist magnet. So... um, Please pause the video if you guys want to have a better look at the stats because I need to run through them or we'll be here all day. Uh, I, as I said, I call him the assist magnet, getting 11 assists in the 2020-2021 season with seven assists in 21-22 season and an outstanding 24 assists in 22-23. That is amazing. Let me go into a little bit more detail about... Um, last season because that's a season that is most recent and probably the one that we need to take the most from because it is incredible. So with 38 starts in 39 total appearances, Mike Trezor uh, registered 8 goals and 24 assists, racking up a 1.6 shots per 90 Unfortunately, he has missed three big chances over the course of the season. But if you really cut it down and look into it a little very well, um, it shows his conversion rate is actually very good. When he has a shot in front of goal, more times other than not, he scores or he picks out the correct pass to assist his teammate. And he must have done that a hell of a lot if he's got 24 assists. Uh, two left foot, six right footed goals, which dem- further demonstrates that He is just as good on both feet, probably prefers his right foot, but he can use his left if needed. 2.8 key passes per 90, that shows why he got so many assists. For a winger, he completed 0.9 long balls per 90, which basically just round that up to a 1, but for a winger to play a long ball, unheard of really, and Elise is really the only one that I know of, maybe other than Man City players, that really play these long passes um, consistently. Um, 1.1 tackles and 0.7 interceptions per 90 also show his defensive work rate and he will defend if he needs to. 1.6 dribbles, 3.9 ground duels, 1 per 90, which shows just the all-around great attributes of being a winger. He can dribble, he can defend, he can do everything really. And... Really a great injury record as well, something that we really need to look at more as Crystal Palace. And I think the board needs to look at it a bit more because for some reason we keep buying these injury-prone players. We bought Elise when he was injured, unfortunately picked up another knock or a hamstring injury um, in his game for the French in the Euros. Scored a great goal, but unfortunately you get injured sometimes. Um, But yeah, 
he's only been injured for six days in his whole professional career. That is a, that is incredible. For him to be 24 and have that kind of injury record is just something that you can't turn your head up. You can't turn your nose up about it because it's that good. And for someone to be that reliably on the pitch playing football for you and is that good at football, it's a massive asset to the team. Massive, massive asset. All of this is absolutely incredible. Unfortunately, according to HLN, a news source, uh, Mike Trezor is not keen on a move to Crystal Palace at this current time. He recently got his first Belgium cap for the first team, and I'm sure that he has plenty of interest from other clubs in Europe that can offer him European football, maybe even a bigger club. Maybe they can offer him more money. We don't really know. However, hearing something like this was really hurtful because I believe that... Mm -hmm. What is happening right now with us not having a manager, potentially that Roy is going to sign a new deal, um, and nothing confirmed as of the day of recording this, but it shows a little bit of a lack of ambition that we're, we're looking at the right players, but because the club's not showing interest, we're not paying enough money up front, we're trying to do all deals on the cheap, no manager, no current playing style, lots of players out of contract. It's just somewhere where players will look at us and not really think there's no ambition there. We've been 12 for 10 years in a row. And, you know, they're, they're thinking, I, I, why would I want to come here when I could go to West Ham and play in the Europa League next season? Like, it's just things you have to think about. And it's a little bit disappointing to know that we lack that kind of ambition. And for us Palace fans, I think that we deserve to have a little bit more ambition than we currently have. Uh, not slating the ball, I'm not slating Texture at all because he seems to be the one that's trying to push for stuff. But uh, other people, Blitzer, Harris, we're looking at you. And Parrish, I think certain times we need to pull our money out a bit more because I think this guy's worth it. And I think that Without, as I said, without all this managerial ambition, we've got no pull of the player. So, unfortunately, that's how things go. Personally, in my opinion, I think Mike Trezor is my top replacement for Wilfred Zaha. He's got all the qualities that are similar to him, some qualities that are similar to Elise, such as being direct. I think he would cost about 20 to £25 million, pounds, uh, probably with a little bit of a sell-on clause on there as well because of how good he's been this season. I think it's obviously a huge gamble to spend that kind of money on a forward, as it always is. But I think that the fact that he's similar to Elise and still slightly different means that both on the left and the right wing, we're going to have some dangerous players and we're going to be setting up some great goals for whoever's up front for us next season. But, you know, if we keep looking at players like this, maybe even snatch one or two of them, we could be looking for a top 10 finish next season. And hopefully that is the springboard for us to push on and maybe climb up the table a bit more than, a bit more than we usually do. So, you know, let's see what happens. Ronnie Edwards, otherwise known as the centre-back with a Cruyff turn. The 20-year-old Englishman who currently plays at centre-back currently plays for Peterborough. Uh, he's currently on Crystal Palace's radar and has been for a while. But he, he looks like he's on our radar to strengthen Crystal Palace's squad, maybe. Um, similar to Scherz, maybe to add depth on the bench this time. Um, he's been a consistent starter for Peterborough for the last three seasons. He has played two seasons in League One and one season, full season in the Championship. Um, very experienced for someone so young. He started playing first team football, men's football at the age of 17, and he's taken to it um, really well. Um, he seems to be really physically built, built for the game, very comfortable with the game. And signing a player that's this young and has that much talent and has that much game time, showing that he's adapted to the men's game, is something that we really need to capitalise on. Um, he has a great range of one-touch passing, dribbling forwards, as we as we talked about with Schurz. But another thing he does like to do a Cruyff turn. Um, please go and watch some videos on it because it's actually incredible, his jokes as well, because he will just stand there on the ball, very similar to what Levi Coe was done at Brighton. But instead of just a touch, he'll do a Cruyff turn, which is just so much better. Um, yeah, basically, he'll let them press... Either do one, two touches this way, turn, quote, turn this way, and start dribbling away. He'll do that. He'll dribble very far forwards with the ball and lay off a one touch pass, ping a long ball, very good um, range of passing. And 
He's very strong and very fast as well. So he's got really good attributes to be a really good player for us. Uh, he, he's very he's much more suited to be a left sided centre back slash a left back, uh, which is what he has done. Has to fill in on the left side as the full back goes up. However, he is able to cover on that right hand side position as he has done for Peterborough and he could do for us in the future. With 40 starts, with 40 total appearances, uh, with zero goals, one big chance missed from a corner. I think that was one assist. Um, this registered this season with an 85% pass success rate throughout the whole season. Um, obviously, very good. Most of it's just passing around the back, but adding that to him hitting long balls, which he does 3.9, uh, I mean, pardon me, 3.8 long balls per 90, shows dynamic range of passing, which is much better than Scherz, but still not as good as Anderson. But for someone so young, I'm sure we could maybe coach him or teach him how to do it to the level that Anderson can with an average of 9.8 passes into the opposition half shows how progressive he is and how forward thinking he is even as a defender at 14 clean sheets 1.4 interceptions two tackles per 90 shows his reliability at the back with 3.3 clearances per 90 which shows he's got the experience to know that when he went to get rid he gets rid um, seventy-five percent dribble success rate. I know that is only zero point two per ninety. However, as I said, if he'll turn and he starts running, he'll like pretty much nine times out of ten, it will come off. And having that kind of dribble success rate as a defender is out of this world. I'm sure it's got to be top ten in Europe for centre backs. I'm sure of it. Um, with three yellows and one red, show that he's very decent. Um, when yeah, it shows that he's very decent when defending. Three yellows is really not that much, but the one red was a complete head loss and he needs to rake it in. He needs to show, like, keep showing the passion as he has done, but he needs to control his emotions a little bit better. According to Transfer Marked, he's had zero injuries throughout his whole professional career. Uh, contract is up in two years, I believe, so potentially we could get him for a good price. The Daily Mail has reported that Crystal Palace and Bournemouth are both looking to sign him, sign that highly rated under 20 center back for about 7.5 million pounds this would be a great move for both teams as he's got great experience in championship and league one mainly with men's football and for both teams it'd be a very smart pickup not too much money some with incredible potential i think that this is one that we need to look at for not the now but the future he could be the future mark gay in my opinion with the attributes that he shows and i think we need to put our faith in this guy and go for it because 7.5 million pounds is not a lot of money bear in mind i think last season when we tried to buy him i'm pretty sure there was a rumor about three million pounds was his asking price and looking at what he's done and how well he's done that transfer fee is doubled let's say he does that in the premier league english young 30 million pounds it's 30 million pounds for any englishman that can play football in the premier league these days so i'm sure that anyone that's half decent he'll go for some serious money i think that it's a bit of a weird one because we've already signed up tomkins on another deal klein and wardy on another deal who can but um when wardy can play center back as well so it sort of leaves him in a bit of a no man's land and for someone like him i'm sure he'd want to play football um so i doubt he would pick us but if we can get him and maybe loan him back to Peterborough, maybe t send him to a championship loan, I'd be all for it. I don't want to ruin his career and because I think he'll be an incredible centre-back one day. But I have to say, if we can do it, Parrish, please, £7.5 million, great investment, trust me. One last little thing about Ronnie Edwards is just the fact that because of how little he gets injured, and unfortunately how much Chris Richards gets injured, it shows that when he was called upon... He was injured some of the time, um, so unfortunately he didn't get to play in some of those games. We had to play Tom Kins, we had to play Ward at centre-back. But with his incredible injury record, we won't have to do that again. We'll have quality centre-backs at all times of the season. Uh, yes, guys, thank you very much for watching this. It was a bit of a longer one today. A lot of Wilfred Zaha potential replacements and two new centre-backs that could be coming into the club. Looking like an exciting window, hopefully. Hopefully we get a manager soon so we can start actually picking up these kind of players. 
Um, potentially we've already bidded some money for some players so interesting to see how it develops please stay tuned as always like share subscribe put in the comments below um, out of the wingers who you would rather and who you think is going to be sold out of Gay and Anderson um, also in the comments um, put who you want me to cover next week and guys thank you very much for watching this is JC from Eagle Eyed Football and I'm out up the palace Eagles <laughs>